Welcome to General PC Cleaning Presentations for the Licking County Computer Society Digital Image Help Desk. Tonight, or in this particular segment, what we'd like to do is what is the dust bunny? The elusive dust bunny that is dangerous to all of us in all of our use of PCs. What is the dust bunny? Here's a wanted poster of the evil dust bunny. Basically, the dust bunnies, you've all seen them. They're those little balls of dusty, furry stuff that seem to follow around us and get inside our computers and cause all kinds of havoc. We see them especially under our bed, under the furniture. They make their way into our computers. Why is it bad for them to live in our PCs? For a no, number of reasons. Number one, they can cause overheating. They clog fans. They clog openings in our PC that allow cool air to come into the PC and keep it from overheating, especially on the processor. On the heat sink, the fans that are cooling our heat sink will build up with dust and cause them to overheat, which can uh, cause a loss of efficiency. So when PC heats up, sometimes the processor doesn't run quite as fast as it should and can cause other components to run slower. Component damage. Dust bunnies can cause... Um, the heat damage can damage our processor, damage other chips on the motherboard. Also, they can cause component damage. Uh, they can short out components on the motherboard uh, such as video cards and controller cards and so forth like that. They also can spread germs. Uh, the germs are caught up in the in the dust bunnies and then the germs are spread through by blowing through the machine and going out into the rest of our environment. Our agenda in this presentation is to discuss a little bit how often to clean tools needed for cleaning, general cleaning tips, and cleaning specific components such as the case, the CD-ROM, DVD-ROM drives, keyboards, monitors, and mice. These are the components most, most uh, used and generally allow the user to be able to clean them. First of all, how often do I clean? That's a good question. Depends on a number of variables. Such variables as location. Is the computer in a home? Is it in an office, an industrial area, or a school? Depending on this location, it could depend on how often or how intense the cleaning has to be. The environment. In other words, are there animals in the environment in the area where the computer is being used. Are there smokers? Is the computer on the floor? Is it on a carpeted floor or bare floor? Are, is food or drink used around the PC? These are environmental conditions that can, uh, variables that can determine how often you have to clean it. Next one is, the last one is who uses the PC? Is an adult uses the PC? A young adult? A preteen, or more than one person. If a, the computer is used strictly by adult, <coughs> chances are it's going to be cleaner than if it's used by a young adult, teenager, or a preteen. Like a kindergartner would could cause to be have to clean the computer more often, or if more than one person's using it because they're different care, different things. You may have an adult use it and a preteen parent and a child using it, it could, could you need to be cleaned more often. Tools needed is a cloth. Now the best suggested cloth is a microfiber cloth like the ones used to clean eyeglasses or a lint-free soft cloth will also work. Uh, water or rubbing alcohol to clean surfaces with. Say these two are safe to use on most surfaces of systems. An air supply. The air supply could be a compressor, 
uh, that you plug into the outlet and it pumps up and has an air hose. Or it can be canned air. Um, the canned air is available at most office supplies, office store supplies like uh, Staples or Office Depot, Best Buy, places like this. A portable vacuum. A vacuum cleaner can be used to, to clean up the dust in the area or around the air when you're cleaning, especially as you blow the dust out of the computer. You could use the vacuum to clean the area around. The vacuum um, can be either a plug in the wall, 110 volt, or uh, it could be a battery powered vacuum. As I said, it's used to clean up the outside of the case. Cotton or foam swabs can be used to clean in tight areas when getting into small tight places or like in between the fins of your the cooling solution, the heat sink on your on your processor or on, on the fan blades or in the small tight openings the air vents on the machine. Some general now we want to start the section on general cleaning tips. First is the use of liquids. Never directly spray liquids onto a component or um, any part of the computer. You want to apply the liquid to a cloth, then clean the component. So we don't want to spray it on um, whenever we want to spray it on the cloth, then wipe the surface the component or the surface with the cloth. Use of a vacuum. <coughs> Limit your use of the vacuum to the exterior. Vacuums can generate static electricity, which can cause damage to your internal, internal components. So we want to try to limit to sucking the air out or the dust out of outside openings or things like that. Use your air, your compressed air or your air supply to blow the dust out of the inside and use the vacuum cleaner to suck the dust up on the outside or to suck it out of any vents from the outside. Shut down your computer before cleaning. As you know, we don't want to... Um, if we did cause a static electric charge, we don't want it to to discharge to the computer while it's running. And it's best clean it when power is down. That way if you dislodge any cables or controls, you're not uh, causing any problems with the computer itself. And be sure to ground yourself by touching the metal of the computer case or the power supply. Um, several of the websites that I researched showed that to leave the computer plugged in to the power cord plugged into it. This way, by touching the, the metal case of the power supply, you'll drain off any static electricity off of your body and it'll go through the case and out through the cord to the ground on the, on, in the wall outlet instead of grounding itself to the circuits in the computer and possibly blowing the chips or damaging the, the internal components on the motherboard. Be careful not to bump any knobs, controls, or dislodge any cables connected to the computer. You want to make sure that if you do, make sure when you're done, make sure you push all the plugs back in to make sure that they are seated firmly on the computer. Choose liquid cleaners carefully. You don't want to choose ones that are going to be too caustic or toxic to somebody else touching the computer or um, cause a damage to the case or components of the computer when you rub them on. Be careful using cleaning solvents. These can damage the case, damage the plastic finishes on your components of your computer systems. Uh, some cleaning solvents can soften these plastic surfaces and uh, take away th from their beauty. can cause also allergic reactions in some users. Somebody may be allergic to a, a cleaning solvent and when they, sit, if they come down and sit down and use your computer then it could cause them to have a reaction to that cleaning solution. Secure any fans to prevent them from spinning during cleaning. 
when you spray the air supply over the fan to remove the dust I find it good to use like a pencil a wooden pencil or a plastic straw to insert into the fan to keep it from spinning while you're blowing the air over it or while you're taking in your small brush your swab and brushing the dust off it can cause the air supplies can cause over rotation which can cause damage most of heating or cooling fans are, are designed to run at a specific RPM and sometimes air supplies can be high enough pressure to take and overspin that fan and cause damage to the bearings. If you're using an air compressor, if it's one that has an adjustable pressure regulator on it, make sure that you adjust your pressure down to about 15 pounds per square inch or PSI. This will um, minimize any any effects that you might have on it. Fans can also be create an electric charge. Um, a lot of them are permanent magnet fans, and as the even though the computer is off, the air rotating the the fan on it can generate electricity, and it could be fed back into your computer, damaging in some of the components or the motherboard or chips on board the computer. Food and drink should be kept away from the computer and components whenever possible. Uh, fruit crumbs dropping down in your keyboards, spilling drinks on the keyboard or inside if it's a laptop onto the laptop um, keyboard which gets down into side, inside to the power, power where it's at and the motherboard and can cause quite a bit of problems. Smoking should be restricted around the computer. Since the fan, the cooling fans on the case of the computers are sucking air in, it sucks that smoke in inside the computer and smoke can contaminate the motherboard <coughs> and the connections in the computer. The smoke film um, gets on the components and can or the connectors and cause them to make not, to not make good connections. The case. A lot of times the cases are plastic or could be metal. Uh, use a lint-free cloth dampened with water to clean um, the case with. This should take care of most most dirt that, or smudges that are on your machine. Use a household detergent for stubborn stains. Again, apply the detergent <coughs> to the cloth and then rub on the surface where the stain is at. And then use the damp cloth again with water. Uh, to remove the detergent from the surface. Make sure all openings and vents are free from debris. This is where you use your vacuum to suck that dust back out of the vent because it was sucked into it so by using the vacuum you're sucking it out as opposed to if you use your air supply you're pushing that dirt further into that vent maybe even clogging it even more. CD and DVD ROM drives. Um, these generally don't need too much as far as cleaning. Generally I would leave it if it isn't broke don't fix it type of thing. Um, if you do find that your drive is skipping, it's not reading your media, it could be that it is dirty. The best solution to this is from several of the websites that I researched. The best way to clean them is to buy one of those special cleaning discs um, from a computer electronics or office supply retailer. <coughs> they usually come with a cleaning supply. There is a, <coughs> a uh, area on the disc with a fiber thing that you wet with a solution. You put it in your drive. You start uh, close the the drive and it starts to spin up. It goes through a series of spinning and then it cleans the lens on the the laser that reads the CD or DVD drive. Most of the times we don't want to do too much. It doesn't take much, just one little speck of dust can, can create uh, a problem. 
before you even buy the disc, you might try taking your canned air, taking the little hose, the little plastic straw that comes on it, the tube. Take that tube, insert it inside the drive, and uh, move it around and spray, spray some of the air in there to see if that would, if there's some dust on the lens. If that doesn't take care of it, then I would go to one of the discs. Now remember to open the drive when the machine is off. If you take and straighten out a paper clip, you usually find a small little hole on the face of the drive and you insert the paper clip into that small hole and you can manually bring the tray out. Uh, if the tray has anything spilled into it, you can be cleaned with a cloth dampened with water. Be sure to dry completely before closing to make sure that you're not taking water the dampness into the drive when it when you close the drive back up. Keyboards. Keyboards can be the mo one of the most germ infected areas of your home or office. Many things live inside the keyboards literally. <coughs> and so periodically they should be wiped down. Uh, use compressed air, aim between the keys with the little a plastic tube that comes with your can and it's the most effective way to clean the keyboard. Surfaces should be cleaned with disinfectant, sprayed on to a lint-free cloth and then rubbed across the keyboard. Sometimes if something becomes lodged underneath the keys <coughs> and the compressed air will not blow it out, then it is possible to take like a pen cap or something like that and you can pop the keys off of the keyboard and then you could remove whatever is obstructing the key from going down then pop the key back on. I would be careful and only take one key off at a time unless you can remember exactly where the keys go because you can put them, they are interchangeable and they will fit on any keys. In extreme cases where you may have draw, uh, spilled a liquid on your keyboard. Um, I have read where you can take the keyboard, uh, a wired keyboard like a USB keyboard, and put it in the dishwasher and run it through the cycle and have it select no heat. And as a last resort, you might try this trick to, especially if you've uh, you or somebody has spilled uh, a can of or a soft drink or juice inside the keyboard which becomes sticky. A um, couple of the articles I read or the websites I went to suggested that as a last resource. I would not use put a wireless keyboard in and I would not put a keyboard in that might have a little LCD screen on it. Those things do not live well with water. LCD monitors LCD monitors can become dusty and fingerprints and so forth depending from time to time. Um, when you clean your LCD monitor, do not spray liquid directly on the screen. Again, you want to spray it onto a cloth and then wipe the surface. Um, you, when you're wiping the surface, do not press too hard while wiping the screen. You can damage the LCD. The websites I went to suggested using like uh, rubbing alcohol to clean the surface. Um, they said rubbing alcohol is one of the things that the manufacturers use to clean the surface, the screen on the LCD monitor before they ship them from the factory. Do not use paper towels which can scratch. Use the microfiber cloth or lint-free cloth as we've talked about before to uh, clean the, the screen with. As again, as I said, use uh, rubbing alcohol on the microcloth, apply it to the cloth, and for stubborn spots. Most of the time, the microcloth, uh, whether it just be dampened with water, may take off most smudges. The microcloths take a lot of the smudges off without even being damp. So try the microcloth first. If that doesn't work, try a little bit of water. As, a, as the last thing for stubborn spots, use some rubbing alcohol on the microcloth to clean the stubborn spots off. CRT monitors, these are the old style monitors, the one that have the glass screens on them. 
Um, CFTs have the glass screen, which means you, you may use ordinary house cleaner, glass cleaner, um, and a microcloth to clean the screen. Again, use spray it onto the cloth, then wipe the screen. Do not spray the cleaner directly on the screen. It can run down the screen inside the case and could cause you some problems later. You also use uh, compressed air or vacuum to clean any of the vents and openings on the monitor case. As the monitors, most monitors do not have fans in them, so they use convection heating. In other words, hot air goes out of the top, cold air comes in the bottom. Make sure that you, you keep these vents clear of the dust uh, by using the compressed air or vacuum. This will take the dust out and keep it so that the air will move smoothly through the case and keep it heated. I have seen some cases where they've gotten so, so hot because they were blocked that they actually warped the plastic cases on some of the openings. Mice. Mice can also be uh, a place where some germs hide. Um, much like your keyboard, the hands are used on the mouse all the time. Um, generally on the outside of the mouse, again, take uh, a dampened microcloth, wipe the surface, apply some spray disinfectant on the cloth, wipe the surface to disinfect the surface of the mouse. Mice come in a number of several different types. One is the old ball mice, the mechanical mice. Uh, they have a ball, a little ball on the bottom, like a rubber covered steel ball inside on the bottom. Um, to clean these mice, you want to open the mouse. Usually if you turn it upside down, there's a ring that's around the ball. If you turn it, I think counterclockwise, it will come off and the ball will come out. When you look inside, you'll see two small little wheels that run on the mouse. And as you move it, it changes the cursor on the screen. Make sure that these the small wheels are not covered with dirt or dust. Um, if so, take a cotton swab or foam swab, clean it off, maybe blow it out a little bit with some compressed air. You probably should take the ball and take a little bit of, uh, take your cloth, a little damp cloth, rub, put, the, put it inside the cloth, the ball inside the cloth, and rub it all around to make sure that you take off any dirt and grime that may have built up on the ball. Optical mice are the ones, they have the ball, they have the little red light usually, a little laser light that f picks up movement on a desktop or pat pattern surface. Uh, to clean these, again to clean the outside of the, of the mouse, the top part where your hand rests, use uh, some spray disinfectant or some water sprayed on a cloth, wipe the outside of the surface, maybe uh, Rub the, scr the scrolling wheel. If you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, rub it a few times and clean it with the cloth because oil from your fingers will collect on the wheel. And this will help clean that. Other than that, on an optical mouse, you turn it over. Clean the bottom gently with your damp cloth. Uh, make sure that the lens on the bottom where the laser shows through is nice and clear that there are no there is no dirt or dust obstructing that laser opening. Be careful of the mouse if the computer is plugged in. You don't want to really look in, at that red light, have it shine in your eyes. It is a laser. Some people say that it's not. For the most part, the laser is not strong enough to do damage. But for young children, it, I would uh, recommend not letting them look into the light. Uh, even as an adult, I would try to refrain from looking directly at it. They are low power but they still may cause some discomfort. Wireless mouths. Wireless mice can be both uh, have a ball or they could be optical. Most uh, wireless mice today are optical so they do not uh, have a ball. Again, if, whether it's mechanical or optical, you want to f follow the cleaning steps that we discussed about the mechanical and optical mice, both cleaning the outside and taking the ball out of its mechanical mouse, uh, cleaning the lens if it's an optical mouse. Also too, since it is wireless and it has batteries in it, usually um, you want to open the battery compartment, check for batteries that may be leaking or any corrosion that has built up on the contacts of the inside the mouse where the batteries go. 
this can hamper your operation of your mouse and keep it from working smoothly. If you do get some corrosion on the contacts, uh, a good tool to use is a, a, a pencil eraser. Take the eraser and rub on the contact. The eraser is just abrasive enough that it will take off most corrosion off of those contacts. So then when you put the battery in, it has a nice clean surface to, to make contact with the battery. In summary, uh, periodical cleaning procedures can extend the life of your PC. Uh, it will keep the dust from building up, heat building up and causing premature failure of components. Keeping the computer as cool as possible will extend the life. Uh, a lot of uh, processors in today's computers are very fast and because they're very fast they generate a lot of heat. So it's important that we keep our cooling, solu our cooling solutions, uh, your heat sinks on your fans and or your processors and the fans that are cooling them clear of any dust and dirt so that good airflow is traveling across those. Uh, be careful and safe when working around your electronic equipment and sensitive components. Remember to unplug it, turn, keep, or turn it off, leave the power cord plugged in but turn the machine off and remember whenever you're touching the machine touch the metal case if it's a metal case touch it first or touch the metal on the power supply up inside the computer before touching any components. This will d help to drain off the static electricity. You might even want to try to clean the computer in an area where there's no carpeting. Uh, the winter time is especially bad for tr trying to clean because of static electricity seems to build up more in the winter time than other times of the year. Lastly, make sure that you track down the elusive dust bunny and send it to Dust Bunny he well, Heaven or the other place if you decide. It's important to, to keep them out, to hunt the Dust Bunnies down and eliminate them from our environment in our PC. Where can you go to get more information? The link here on the screen right now below will, is the site that I found most useful when preparing this presentation. Uh, it's www.computerhope.com forward slash cleaning.htm you'll find a um, very useful especially on this site is a tool to help you determine how often you are to clean. Remember we talked about the variables like environment and who's using it um, and that and those things. There's a chart on this website where you click in these little boxes by answering the questions. You click in the little boxes. Then at the bottom it will t give you a suggested time period that you should clean by like every six months or every once a year depending on the var variables that you have checked in the little boxes. I played with it when I was doing my research and found out that <coughs> it makes a month's difference whether the PC is on a carpeted floor or on bare floors. If it's sitting on a carpeted floor or sitting on a bare floor. If it's on a bare floor, you, do, you get one more month that you don't have to clean. I think it was, uh, if it was on a carpeted floor, you had, with some of the other variables I had, it suggested every six months. When, when I changed the variable to bare floor, it said every seven months. So just, um, it gives you some tools and there's some other things tells you how to clean uh, CD media, DVD media. It's I found the site very, very, very helpful. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our presentation. I hope it's been useful to you. Um, we look forward to providing more helpful, useful demonstrations in the future. Thank you for your time.